The Zolkian calendar is a ceremonial or religious calendar. It's 260 days, um, 13 numbers, followed by 20 days or sun signs. 13 by 20 is 260 days. It's based on the nine months of human gestation. This calendar, for any of you that got the book tonight, this is what the cat, their book is based on. This is the Zolkian calendar. The Zolkian calendar is the only calendar that the Maya have kept track of all these years. This is the only one that they know for sure exactly what the day is. They, they admit that they've lost track of the long count, but they have people dedicated, and they're called day keepers. And Zolkian means count of days. They have day keepers to make sure that they keep track of the days and so that everybody understands the energy of the day. The 260 days, they believe, represents the nine months of gestation. Okay. Um, you see the 13, they believe that that represents the joints in the body. So the ankles, the knees, the hips, the elbows, the wrists, the um, shoulders, and your neck. So 13. And then, of course, the 20 are your fingers and your toes. This calendar, they say, is what lights your way. This is your star map. This is your destiny map. They would name their children based on the day that they were born. They believe they have an astrology. There's a Mayan astrology, just like Western astrology. And they believe that the day that you were born helps chart out the destiny for your life. So imagine if, instead of greeting me and saying, hey, Kathy, imagine if you came and I said, hi, my name is Savanish. You would know immediately so much about me. Very similarly, if I walked up and said, hi, I'm Aries. You know, you kind of know a little bit about somebody that's an Aries. Imagine here, they name their children based on their Zolkin day. And this was how they helped just imagine an entire village helping, guiding you on your way and following your passion and following your destiny. Can you imagine how different our world would be today if everybody did that? How different would that be? So I wanted to um, bring this up. Um, many people think that this is the Mayan calendar, and it's not. Um, a gentleman by the name of Jose Aguelius, some of you may have heard of him. Um, this actually represents the dream spell calendar. Jose Aguelius did a lot of work um, that was associated with the Maya years ago, but over time, what he did was he took the Mayan glyphs, he moved them around, and then he actually completely gave all new glyphs to each of the symbols. Uh, Don Alejandro, the Mayan elder, actually speaks on the videotape over there about him by name and says that, you know, they asked Don or, um, Jose Aguelius to stop calling Dream Spell the Mayan calendar because it's not the Mayan calendar. So I just want to bring that up because I get asked that all the time. Um, they also say there's nothing wrong with following Dream Spell, and I believe that as well. It's just the Dream Spell is not the Mayan calendar. These are the glyphs of the Mayan calendar. This happens to be today's day sign. Here's the dog. The Maya's description of heaven is when time, place, and your personal intent is all in alignment. The way that you get in this alignment is getting in touch with the energies. Okay? They believe they created the Zolkin calendar to help track the light and the energy that's coming from our galactic center. Remember when we saw the picture of the Milky Way? We have a galactic sun, a galactic center. They created the Zolkin calendar to keep in touch with the energies that are coming from the galactic center as well as our central sun. What's interesting is that science recently is now recognizing that our DNA not only 
um, takes in light, but it also emits light. And we also have the ability to mutate our own DNA, meaning when you're angry or when you're in fear or when you're in a low vibration, your DNA is literally tightly wound. But when you're um, in love, when you're in a higher vibration, when you're happy, you're actually, you know how they say in Hawaii, hang loose? Your DNA is literally hanging loose. When your DNA is hanging loose and it's not tightly wound, that is when you're actually building and you're growing and your immune system is working. When you're in fear, when you're angry, your DNA is tightly wound. Your DNA is not working properly. So based on this picture, has anybody else ever experienced heaven recently? I mean, I'm what you're saying and what I'm seeing, I've been in heaven a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's pretty cool. You know, everybody's got this, not everybody, but many have the idea that it's way out and you can't get there and you can still be here. Well, that's exactly it. And they, they, they're not looking externally or for someone else mm -hmm. to get them to have it. They believe that you can have it here. This is awesome. And when you're in alignment with all this. And, you know, um, John and I, John can tell you, you know, we, we follow the Zolkin calendar. We look at the energies of the day. And um, it, it really does make a difference, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in alignment with what is happening in the flow. Um, they really look at the Zolkin calendar as a sacred marriage, where the day signs are more of the masculine energy and the numbers are the female energy. So they feel that the, your personal intent comes from the numbers. So today is a seven day, okay? And seven, if you think of a pyramid, and there's 13 numbers, so it would be that with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven at the top, and then you go back down. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about waves, but when you think about a wave, the crest of the wave, the most energy of the wave is at the top. Okay? The other thing about being at the top is that you can see all sides, you can see in all directions. The other energy of seven is indecisiveness, because if you're given all these directions, and you're giving all these options, you have to make a choice. So today would be a day of choices, of seeing in all directions, but having to actually make a choice. So again, it's how you resonate with the day. You may be given a lot of choices, and you may find yourself not able to decide. Or if you know that you should be making a decision this day, you can take that information in. So the long count. This is the calendar that's giving us all the stress, OK? Long count calendar, 5,125 years long. Remember this before? Mm -hmm. You saw that underline? Uh, current cycle started August 11, 3114 BC, or October 5th. Um, again, they don't know for sure. Okay? And we're going to go over some quotes from um, Don Alejandro. Measures the mythical beginning of the Maya ends December 21st, 2012, or October 28th, 2011, or we don't know. Nobody knows for sure. Uh, we're going to find out where we're getting that October 28th, 2011 date from. Um, that goes with the evolution of consciousness. But the bottom line is we don't know for sure when that long count ends. Uh, Don Alejandro, the head of the Mayan elders, does recognize October 28th as a very special day in the Mayan calendar. In fact, um, Carl Kalman, who we're going to find out a little bit more about, was just honored by the Maya elders. Okay. Here's the bottom line. If you have a calendar or anything and you know how long it is, but you don't know when it started, can you possibly know when it ended? Right. So logically, if we don't know for sure when it started, we don't know for sure when it ended. And again, I always go back to you know, if we want to know when the Mayan calendar ends, perhaps we should listen to some Maya versus some scientists. So Don Alejandro, and we're gonna, again, we're going to see quotes from him, he says, we don't know when it ends. 
We don't know. So if it's the Mayan calendar and the Mayas say that it doesn't end in 2012, why would we listen to someone else, right? The beginning of the long count calendar. Now we have a time frame, right? We've got a general idea of when it began. We did have, um, so it's about 3100 BC, give or take a few hundred years, right? Um, megalithic monuments were being built. Okay. Climactic changes um, in locations throughout the northern hemisphere. Dead sea levels rose 300 feet. Um, Greenland shows volcanic activity. Signs showing a period without the sun. And we're going to see this again. Uh, water levels rose, and temperatures changed, and we could see it in the ice caps. Um, this all happened around the last beginning of a long count. So it's logical to think that we may be in for some more Earth-type changes, but I'm not here saying that they're catastrophic. Everybody remember this? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody know where this is? 